All right, um, so yeah, today I'll be talking about custom pages in model-driven apps. They're pretty sweet. Uh, I've built just a couple, so I'll show you how to create them, and then I'll show you the use case. So let me share my screen. Can someone confirm that my screen is seen? Okay, it's thank seen. you, Shire. All right, so um, let me just switch over here. So I'm in a solution. Um, so if you want to create a custom page, um, all you do is you click this add page button here. So as you see, this is the modern viewer for model driven app. Um, I don't know if this is possible through classic viewer, um, the, the, cl the classic way. So if you still do that, you're old. Um, so if you click add page, you have these three different types. Obviously, these are what we're used to dashboard or uh, a viewer form. But if you click custom, you hit next, give it a name. I'm not going to actually save this. So. Um, what it does is it opens up, opens up a new window and it's going to look exactly like you're opening up a canvas app because custom pages are canvas apps except for the ui elements they use the fluid ui which is the same ui elements for um, model driven apps at least they say that they still look a little bit different um, so just an example if you put a label i'm just going to throw up a couple things here just so you can kind of see. So if you are familiar with Canvas apps, you'll notice that this looks a lot different. Whoa. Looks a lot different. Um, I've heard people refer to Canvas apps as Mickey Mouse looking, which is pretty accurate. Um, they, they can look a little hokey. Canvas apps are really bubbly and weird colors. Um, so with these new UI elements, um, you can see it's a lot sleeker, simpler, um, like if you do a calendar, that looks a lot better than a Canvas app and calendar. Um, I think a lot better. I don't have Canvas app open up or else I would show you, or do I? Um, so it's a lot simpler simpler of a process. Um, if, you are, if you are familiar with Canvas app calendar, you have to open the calendar, click your date, and then click OK. But in here, you can see we can just click the 14th and it shows up. So UI elements, pretty simple. You don't have as many UI elements as Canvas app. So but the cool thing is if you want those, you can go open up a Canvas app. And you can copy and paste the element into the page. So anything a Canvas app can do, you can do in a page, which is really good, cool. Um, why you would use a page over a Canvas app? So normally the use case for a Canvas app is if you've, you're embedding that Canvas app onto a form. So you're on an opportunity, you select an opportunity, and once the opportunity opens up, you have a form that is tied to that opportunity and you can interact with the data with the opportunity kind of expands that functionality whereas a page is its own page it does, it's not tied to a record it can just do whatever you want so let me show you an example kevin did you have a question i did i was just going to ask does the same canvas app licensing apply to these pages as ah. opposed to Canvas apps. Excellent question. No, a page is part of the model driven app. OK. Which is super nice because, yeah, um, that's a really good thing to point out. So normally with the Canvas app, you would have to either share it with the organization um, or share with the individual people who are using your model driven app, whereas with pages, it's just part of the model driven app. So whoever has access to the model driven app has access to the page just by default. Don't have to worry about licensing. It's just part of the app, which is really cool. So um, I'm going to quickly walk you through um, the situation with Beware Idaho that we were faced of why we went through a page. So this is um, the admin grading app for Beware Idaho. Um, they have a bunch of graders who get assigned um, courses and sections to grade assignments. And the process of assigning a grader to a section was pretty sucky. I'll show you what it was. So they would go to Art 130. They would click to open up a section. They'd be like, OK, we have two sections, but the majority of courses have like 10 sections. Then they'd have to open up the section. And then they'd have to click I want a new grader and then they would add a new grader. So I'm going to put Brandon. Brandon Gordon. This 
So Brandon Gordon is now a grader. So obviously that wasn't too bad just doing one, but if you have to do if you have 30 new graders and you have 100 sections, it's a it's a pretty painful process to do. And so we needed to simplify that. And I'm sure there's some other ways you can simplify it through um, just model driven apps. But what we decided to do is we just created a page. So now what we have here is here we have all of the graders, here we have all the sections, and here we have the actual section assignments. So if I search for Brandon Gorton, if I hit view sections here, you can see you can see Art 138 as assigned to him. You can see all of his assignments right here. And uh, obviously we can delete from right here. But if I wanted to assign him to, let's say five of these, I could just, um, I guess six in this case, uh, select him. You can create those enrollments and it'll go through and it'll create those enrollments. And you can also do multi-select over here. So if I selected these, I'm actually not going to create these because this is um, in production. But if I was to hit create enrollments, it would add these three people and Brandon all to the selected sections here. So it turned the process of assigning graders from like an hour long process to now it takes like five or ten minutes. Um, a cool example of when this actually worked is so they have they have graders in the Philippines now and they were hit by a typhoon. Uh, I think it was like the week of Christmas or the week before Christmas, hit by a typhoon, so none of the grades in the Philippines were able to grade. And so they, they needed a quick way to assign all those assignments to the, the US-based graders. So using this tool, they were able to do it within five minutes, and it was like nothing ever even stopped them from grading because I guess that, let me take it back, let me rephrase that. They never felt the pain of that typhoon because they were so quickly able to assign graders that um, the grading was able to continue on smoothly. So pretty cool. Um, pages with what you can do. Um, you can also make pages as pop-outs. I haven't done that yet, uh, but there's some cool examples. I'm just going to kind of show you one here. I'm just going to scroll down so you can actually see it. Um, do, 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 do. Oh, wow. Maybe this is the wrong page. Anyways, you can make pop-ups. Um, Bear with me. Anyways, I can't. I lost it. Anyways, um, but you can make pop-ups. Um, you can. So here, this. So you can also. This is not a change of subject, but you can customize the ribbon now as well, and you can use PowerFX. PowerFX is the language that Canvas apps are you um, control it with, and so you can actually just create a button here and open up a page as well as like a pop-up, um, which is pretty cool. And you can pass in parameters, um, which can be super helpful. Um, so yeah, are there any other questions about um, pages? That's a, I know that's a really quick overview, um, pretty simple, but any questions? Could you use this for something like I'm on an account and I want to see the invoices from BC? Um, yes, yeah, so just like a Canvas app, you, there's 400 data connectors that you can right. use. So yeah, you can, make the, you can make the data source for this. Um, BC or whatever you want. In this case, I, I'm just using dataverse tables, just pulling them all into one page. But yeah, you could use um, almost any data source. So instead of like power BIing the data into CRM, we could just use a page, pass the parameter of an account ID or something like that. Yep, 100%. You could do that. Great. Thank you. Yeah, cool. Yeah, uh, Colby, you said you could do pop-ups. Do you mean like you could do a confirmation pop-up or something like that? Um, yeah, I'm sure you could figure that out. Like I said, I haven't done that. Um, uh, once I get done presenting, I'll send the link to, I was reading an article where someone actually did did that. They created a, a pop-up. Um, so I'll send that in. But yeah, you can create pop-ups of sorts. Pop-ups and like slide outs on the right. Um, there's kind of a lot, a lot of a lot you can do there. Once you start doing that, um, it you do I think have to use JavaScript for like on load type situations or on click situations, um, but it's definitely possible. All right, thanks. Yeah, um, there is one I guess one drawback to pages, and the drawback is this is their recommendation is to only make a page a single page. What that means is sometimes you'll make a Canvas app that will have a navigation, you'll have 10 different pages within a Canvas app. 
Um, but with pages, the recommendation is just have the one. It's just one page. There's no navigation within it. There's no other like hidden pages that you're flipping between. It's just the one page. Um, so yeah, and I think the reason behind that obviously keeps it simpler for the user, but you want them to be navigating over here on the left using the sitemap and not navigating once they're within the app like you normally like you do in Canvas apps. Is this just an option in the sitemap to go to this page instead of to a form or a view? Yeah, so um, when you create, you can add a page here. Mm -hmm. So this add, all right, so you can do their form view, dashboard, or you do, do custom, and that'll just launch it. Um, and what's what's cool is you you don't have to create a, a new one. You can also just use an existing. So I think straight from a. Um, and, when, and when you're editing the model driven app sitemap, you can just select this page. Yep. This custom page. Yeah. Um, is it as painful to move between environments as embedded Canvas apps? No, it, it's a lot better. Yeah, that process of moving it is like, it's not even a concern. You just push okay. it just as normal, which is super nice. Um, but also straight to a solution. If you see, if you go to apps now, so if you want to add an app, a new one, you can just create a page straight from here. Um, and then when you go to add it into that model driven app, instead of creating new, you say choose existing, and then your app's right there. So, so yeah, they're pretty slick. Um, by pretty slick, I mean very slick. I like them a lot. So, yep. any other questions? Hey, Colby, can you jump back to the page and what it looks like in production um, through the editor? Through the editor, yes. So you're talking about in here? Yeah. So yeah, here if we go to greater enrollment. And I'll load eventually. Sometimes they are pretty slow to load initially. Um, okay. And also, once you start doing pages, just like Canvas apps, you have to control how things you can see if someone was to open this up on an iPad, it would look like crap like it does right here. When it opens up on the desktop, it's fine. Um, but you do need to worry about making sure things look good based on the user's device, because obviously I haven't done a good, good enough job here on that. Okay. But that's what it looks like here. Um, this is a, sec a second one we created for them as well. They're kind of the same situation, but. Could those pages be displayed in the portal? In a portal? Yeah. Um, I do not know. I haven't um, done anything with these in portals. I think they're specific for model-driven apps. So I don't think that these will be available for the portal. Darn it. Darn. Um, so I know I'm over my time. I know, Mariah, I want to just keep it um, close to our 15 minutes. If you have any questions about pages, model driven or Canvas apps, um, shoot me a message and uh, we'll work through whatever issue you have. Thanks, Colby. Yes, sir.